Welcome to Trash Imagination, a podcast about reimagining trash. I'm Carla Brown. Today's episode is about creative reuse of tissue paper. I was inspired to research this topic by a woman in my community named Gina Van Valkenberg. I met Gina through our Buy Nothing group. I was working to downsize my craft supplies, including my giant collection of tissue paper. She took some to make crafts with her granddaughters. A few months later, she came to pick up a different item and she wanted to show me something she had made. She had dyed the tissue paper with wonderful flourishes of ink. I asked if I could share photos of her beautiful art through my podcast, and she said, of course. So that's why we are talking about creative reuse of tissue paper today. The goal of this podcast is to share creative reuse ideas for materials that are difficult to recycle through conventional municipal recycling programs, and that is the case with tissue paper. Many people think that they can put it in their paper recycling bins, but that is not true for most paper recycling programs. Tissue paper is made from very short fibers, which means they are not great for recycling, and most municipal recycling programs, including my own, ask that you do not put tissue paper in your recycling bin. So in today's episode, I'll share ideas for craft projects that you can make with tissue paper. You can see photos and videos of these crafts on the Trash Imagination Pinterest board. And if you don't like making crafts, you could donate your tissue paper to your local creative reuse store. I have mentioned these before. They are secondhand stores for craft supplies. I also gave my tissue paper collection to my neighbors through my Buy Nothing group, as I mentioned earlier. And I will also share stories from artists who creatively reuse tissue paper to make inspiring masterpieces. The most popular craft projects with tissue paper are flowers and pom-poms. Since they are so fluffy and colorful and tissue paper is inexpensive, they can add happiness to just about any celebration. I will link to tutorials in the show notes, but to summarize the technique, you stack a bunch of pieces of tissue paper, you fold them like an accordion, you tie them in the middle, and then you fluff them out. One artist who takes tissue paper flowers to the next level of awesome is Leah Griffith. She makes many kinds of flowers, such as poppies, hydrangeas, dahlias, hibiscus, and tulips. She also teaches how to fold tissue paper origami stars, and she posts wonderful, instructive videos. The next craft ideas relate to the fact that a lot of tissue paper contains colorful dyes, and if you put water on the tissue paper, some colorful dye will leak out. Some people call this bleeding tissue paper, and it's a fun way to achieve an effect that looks like watercolor without paints. Cindy Rosier wanted to make a page in her journal that looked like it was underwater, and she achieved this effect by using blue tissue paper scraps and water. Another fun idea is to draw something with white crayon first, and then use the bleeding tissue paper, and the white crayon will resist the ink of the tissue paper and leave the design still visible. On a snow day, you can make art with bleeding tissue paper by tearing up little bits and making a nice arrangement on a tray, and then you put it outside and let the snow make the patterns for you. The next craft ideas are sun catchers or faux stained glass designs, and by faux I mean F-A-U-X. A popular craft with kids is to take clear contact paper, which is sticky on one side, and then frame it with a shape like a circle or a butterfly. The kids then rip little bits of tissue paper and stick it on the sticky side of the contact paper to make a sun catcher. This is a great craft for any season because you can cut out the shape based on the upcoming special event, like a heart for Valentine's Day or a pumpkin for Halloween. Another easy craft that involves little bits of tissue paper is to stick tissue paper shapes on a glass bottle by painting over the tissue paper with Mod Podge or watered-down craft glue. 
There are two Mexican traditions that involve decorating with tissue paper. One is papel picado, or a garland with shapes cut from tissue paper with intricate designs. It's like cutting out snowflakes from tissue paper. You fold the tissue paper to get a repeating or symmetrical design in your garland. Another fun tissue paper craft from Mexico is called cascarones. This is a tradition where you fill eggshells with confetti and then break them open on other people. To make a cascarone, you blow out the egg white and the yolk from the eggshell, fill it with confetti, and then cover the holes with tissue paper and paint. Now, I do not encourage you to use glitter made from plastic because it's really bad for the environment and annoying. But if you can fill your cascarones with glitter or confetti that you make from hole-punched leaves or tissue paper, that's better. In Japan, on Boys' Day in May, people make Japanese flying carp crafts called koinobori. I love a version designed by Squirrely Mines, which she makes from recycled tissue paper and toilet paper tubes. For many years, I did a monthly art class at my children's elementary school. One time we were doing a lesson on Paul Clay, and we were looking at his painting called Castle and Sun, which shows many colorful shapes piled on top of each other. I had saved many plastic containers, I mean the type that hold those packets of lemonade or juice crystals, they are usually from translucent plastic, and I gave the students markers and showed them how they could draw an imaginary world like Paul Clay's art on the container. Then we put a sheet of tissue paper inside the container, along with a battery-powered tea light. And these pieces turned out so well, and they were displayed at our local art gallery. I will link to a lesson plan idea for making 3D curvy sculptures with reeds and tissue paper. This would be more for high school sculpture students. Next, I'll talk about artists who incorporate tissue paper into their work. These artists live all over the world, and if you see a sculpture that's made from translucent paper, it might be tissue paper, but it might also be a stronger paper like Japanese or mulberry paper, so you would want to check with the artist to see what they are using. Maya Freelon Asante is an artist from Baltimore, Maryland, which is not far from where I live. She uses tissue paper to make big splatter paintings using that bleeding tissue paper concept. She also builds big sculptures from tissue paper. In 2018, she built a huge sculpture at the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C. It was in the Smithsonian Art and Industries Building. This sculpture was hanging from the ceiling in a room that is at least three stories high. The sculpture looked like these long rectangles of crumpled and dyed tissue paper. There was maybe like 30 giant long rectangles that were at least two stories high. In an interview with the Smithsonian Magazine, Maya talked about how she first got the idea to work with tissue paper when she was at her grandmother's basement, where she found a package of water-damaged tissue paper. Three weeks after she found that tissue paper, Hurricane Katrina hit the Gulf Coast. She started thinking about how water can change and impact things. I will link to videos of Maya's pieces so you can check them out in the show notes. Also, as I was researching her work, I learned that her father, Phil Freelon, was the architect who designed the Smithsonian Institution's National Museum of African American History and Culture. And her mother, Nena Freelon, is a famous singer with six Grammy nominations. Frederick Gilbrunet and Sophie mouton para make sculptures that light up. Their most famous works are called Mademoiselle Lamps, and they look like a person wearing a skirt. The skirt is a full length from waist to feet and poofs out in the shape of a sphere. Inside the skirt is a light. The skirt portion is sculpted and electrified by Frederick. Sophie sculpts the upper body portion from tissue paper and other recycled papers. That portion is not so lit up. These sculptures come in many sizes, from bedside lamps to something almost life-sized. They call themselves papier à être or paper for beings. And they call their work poésie sculptée or sculpted poems. And then they also use the phrase un rêve de papier et de lumière 
or a, a dream of paper and light. They have made their lighted sculptures for ballets and operas, as well as private collectors. Patricia Chemin is from France, and I was intrigued to see that she translates tissue paper to papier de soie, or silk paper, which definitely describes how tissue paper feels, but of course tissue paper is not actually made from silk. Each of her sculptures looks like a little bowl or cocoon with a small round window, and she adds tiny crochet or other types of stitching to that open part. She uses tissue paper and other types of paper like that she might find in old books. She writes on her website that she explores the frail balance of an object in space. If you have ever read books to a toddler, you probably read the book called The Very Hungry Caterpillar. It was written and illustrated by the artist Eric Carle, who uses a lot of tissue paper in his work. I will share a video showing his process, which involves painting paper with a lot of textures and then ripping it into shapes to make his illustrations. He also rips tissue paper. He got the idea for writing The Very Hungry Caterpillar when he folded a piece of paper in an accordion style and then punched holes in it. The next two artists build structures from tissue paper that hang from the ceiling and make colorful shapes that look like upside down mountains. Marcelo Giacome is from Brazil and Gabby O'Connor is from New Zealand. I found their work similar even though they don't work together in that they both make giant installations from triangular pieces of tissue paper and they both hang their art from the ceiling and it swoops across the gallery space. Marcelo's work gets its skeleton from bamboo sticks. He calls these pieces planos pipas or kite planes in Portuguese. They are very colorful. I saw them described as a thousand parrots suddenly taking off at the same time. Gabby has made multiple pieces from tissue paper, including what lies beneath. It is made from blue tissue paper held together with staples. Her work is inspired by the Antarctic ice. Light shines through the blue tissue paper and makes you feel like you are underwater looking up at the ice from deep in the ocean. She has worked with scientists in the Antarctic to learn more about how climate change is impacting the ice, and she portrays these impacts in her art. Our last artist today is Polly Verdi, who blogs as Polycene. She is an origami artist who works with many types of paper. She makes very complicated tessellations, and she has also worked with tissue paper. In 2010, she collaborated with her brother, Tom Verity, to sculpt internal organs from tissue paper. She also builds wire sculptures and covers them with mostly white tissue paper. She has developed a proprietary technique for her sculptures. Polly has more than 21,000 followers on Instagram. Thank you for listening. Please let me know if you have made art or other items from upcycled tissue paper at trashmagination at gmail.com. Until next time, may you see tissue paper as a source of art in your life. (laughs) 